morning. Happy Friday. We've just about finished our work week. I thank God that he has kept us to this day. He has provided for all that we needed. He sustained us. He has guided us, advised us through his spirit. And he has allowed us to fellowship with him and come to him whenever we needed him. He was always there. And I thank God for being the kind of God that I can come to whenever I need help. He is always there. Welcome to today's Bible study. Um, we're studying uh, about the birth of Christ this week. The lesson topic is the Savior is born. Before we get started, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning acknowledging that you are the great I am, the creator of all that exists, the lover of your creation, and the manager and savior of your creation. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, our savior, our salvation, our redeemer. He loved us with a love that allowed him to give his life to pay the penalty for our rebellion against you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for accepting the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Thank you for pouring out the punishment that we deserve onto him. And thank you for openly inviting us to fellowship with you. Pray this lesson encourages someone to seek to know you more intimately. I pray that this lesson gives wisdom and matures us in our relationship with you because you are the one great gift that we have received our relationship with you. Thank you for providing a way, Father, through what your son Jesus was born over 2,000 years ago, became a man on this earth, and died for my sins. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, our daily devotional this morning is titled, Virgin Birth. In the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25, it reads, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they um, came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, the son of David, fear not to take unto Mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin 
shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Sometimes uh, God has a purpose for our lives that calls us to have great faith. Joseph had to have great faith uh, to believe this dream and to act on it. But he had an intimate relationship with God, great faith, and so he was able to uh, follow the instructions of God and accomplish a great goal to, to be the earthly father of Jesus, the Messiah. <sighs> Excuse me, I got a little running nose. I've been working nights the last couple of nights. Okay, our lesson, uh, section 1b is titled The Birth. Uh, references Luke chapter 2, verses 6 through 7, and they read, And so it was, that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapping him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And the commentary says, Arriving in Bethlehem six miles south, of Jerusalem, worn out with the long journey, Mary may have already been suffering birth pangs. However, the pair found the little town so crowded with census visitors that there was no room for them in the inn. Joseph, anxiously inquiring, could find no shelter for Mary other than a stable. This stable was perhaps one of the many limestone caves of the vicinity. There the Son of God was born. It was a humble home for the King of Kings, but he came to earth for the purpose of identifying himself with all people. The manager of the stable was probably a stone trough, the manger, excuse me, of the stable was probably a stone trough hollowed out of the side of the cave. Filled with straw, it served as the cradle for the Son of God, who, according to Jewish custom, was wrapped in many long bands of cloth. And so it was that the Son of God stooped to become a part of the human race. Literally, he took on flesh. The Word of God is explicit on this point. Mary had asked the question, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? From Luke 1 and verse 34. The angel answered, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Verse 35 Jesus being born of a woman was an acceptance of humanity with all its limitations, growth, and development. 
Paul said Christ was in the form of God, that is, in his essential attributes and equal with God. That's from Philippians 2 verse 6. In honor, glory, and power, yet he took on the form of a servant. Verse 7. As prophesied, Christ stepped out of heaven to make history. He left his perfect existence to, to come to our imperfect one. And here's an insert here titled God, God's Answer. It says, In some manger straw, Jesus was born. A defenseless baby lying amid the stench and stain of animal dung. What was God's answer to saving the world and righting all wrongs? God became small and dirty. And that's by Leonard Sweet. Okay. Section 2 is titled, Angelic Announcement. The Message, Luke 2, verses 8 through 12. And it reads, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothing, lying in a manger. And the commentary says, When they were out all night, the shepherds slept in their clothes amid their flocks. On the night of Jesus' birth, they were engaged in their common occupation when they received the wondrous revelation from heaven. They were not simply gazing idly up into the sky, neglecting the work at hand. The glory of the Lord was probably that wonderful light which accompanies the appearance of God and his angels. A light like the Shekinah that flamed above the mercy seat of, of the ark. The shepherds should not be blamed for being afraid. The presence of supernatural beings, however lovely and loving they may be, over Oz people with majesty dazzles them with splendor and terrifies them with strangeness. The angel told the shepherds, fear not, in verse 10, that was heaven's first word to earth after the birth of Jesus. Christ often used that same comforting words during his ministry. I bring good tidings is only one word in the Greek. It literally it means I evangelize. Why such words of comfort and hope? It was a sad world to which Christ came. A world of slavery, poverty, 
idolatry, superstition, and infidelity. Christ came as light, joy, and peace. Precisely what the world needed. The message was given to all people. In essence, the message was, you lowly shepherds, you toiling workers, you poor peasants, this radiant Messiah is yours. What a comprehensive announcement the angel gave. A Savior who is Christ the Lord. Jesus means Jehovah is salvation. The name given by the angel of the Annunciation. Christ means anointed. He is the Lord, the true Jehovah, the Lord of righteousness, the Lord of all creatures, the Lord of angels, good and bad, the Lord of all men. And that was written by John Gill. These titles were not given to Jesus by his followers or by himself or by later writers, but were announced as being his by the angel of the Lord. Sent from heaven, God himself was born in Bethlehem that day to the shepherds and to each of us. Christ in the manger meant deity had cradled itself in the midst of sorrow, suffering, and sin. When this child wept, the world would behold God in tears. And we have an insert here titled Message for the Overlooked. It says, We are loved by a God who sees the overlooked. He looks at our hearts not our place in society. So, at the birth of his only son, God chose a group of people invisible to most of the world to celebrate the good news of their Savior's birth. And that's written by Advent Comperi kind of hard to read it's italicized okay well I'm going to stop today my nose is giving me problems sinuses are acting up and so I'm going to stop and I will continue tomorrow hopefully um, to finish the weekly daily study sorry that I've missed a couple of days this week I had to work night shift so uh, forgive me and uh, have a blessed day Thank you.